I'm Matt Fetters. Joining me in the Sprague studio is Parth Chopra, who is the founder of Project Best. Parth, welcome to the studio. Hi, Matt. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. Uh, besides me being very underdressed for this interview, I'm dying to know what is Project Best? Sure. So Project Best stands for Project Building Excitement for Science and Technology. And it's a completely high school student-led nonprofit organization dedicated to providing students with education, enrichment, and joy in learning and understanding the exciting and cutting edge science and technology advances happening around us. So we accomplished this goal using our interactive and hands-on chapters, programs, workshops, and other projects targeted towards middle school students. And based on the three pillars of knowledge, discovery, and experience, we aim to create and drive curiosity in students um, that we work with. In terms of our kind of impact right now, we are currently located in seven, we have 17 different chapters, and these are 17 uh, different middle schools and students run hands-on STEM sessions there. Um, most are in Fairfax County. We have a couple in Virginia Beach and upcoming, and some of the new ones are in Kansas. So we're mm -hmm. trying to broaden our approach here. So when did the program start and how many people do you have working with you? Sure, so um, I came up with the idea for the organization Project Best in the winter of my sophomore year, and from there I brought together a core team of uh, some of my friends, and from there we just went ahead and got started. Um, we expanded to a lot of different chapters. We contacted a um, lot of cold calls, um, and we just reached out to anyone that would be interested, and luckily there were a lot of people interested, and it just grew from there. So I'm not gonna let you off the hook. So how many of your friends, how many people was it with you? And then follow up with, how do you expand like that? You said you're out to Kansas. How does that happen? But first, how many? Sure. So we have a core team of five, five. as well as around 15 directors who handle some of the logistics. And then we have at least two chapter presidents in each one of our chapters. So we're talking about roughly 50 people directly involved um, with Project Best. And the expansion, how do you get it out there? Mm -hmm. So we reached out to our personal contacts. Um, we went to different conferences. We met with a lot of teachers. Uh, we piloted a lot of our sessions too so we could understand exactly what um, administrators, educators want in the program and we modified it and made it flexible accordingly. And from there, there was definitely a need and we just helped fill it from there. Why? Why do this? So Matt, think about the last time you were in a classroom setting. Okay. Do you remember all those equations, the facts and information yeah. you have to remember? Yeah. Um, so being a high school student, everyone involved in Project Best has gone through that same thing. And one unfortunate fact about our education system is that a lot of it is based on road memorization. Now don't get me wrong, road memorization has its merits, um, but in concepts with dealing with STEM concepts, it's important to understand the underlying themes behind it, mm -hmm. and we try to do this with our hands-on activities. We believe in learning by doing, and doing, and if we do that, we can help answer the question that every student constantly wonders. How does what I'm learning right now, how does this relate to my life? So why focusing on the middle school students? Why not just focusing on the high school students, but you've decided to go with middle school? Why middle school? Sure, so a lot of studies have found that the formative years of middle school, so we're talking like sixth to eighth grade, mm -hmm. that's the critical time period um, in regards to STEM. That's where students either make an interest for STEM or they break it. Um, and what we want to do, we wanted to target them at this critical time period and provide them with the activities and interactivity so they can see that this is, this is how it can be applied in my life. This is what I can personally contribute to it. And moving forward, they'll be taking more challenging AP and IB courses in STEM subjects, as well as going to college STEM careers. And we can help address um, the major issues and help drive society forward. You mentioned that you have chapters spreading all over the United States. Mm -hmm. Are you surprised how fast this has taken off and how well it's doing? Um, I think the idea was definitely there. I think there was a need that we helped fill. Um, honestly, yes, I am. Um, yeah. It's been amazing, and we couldn't have done it without a lot of people. And in light of the snow, it kind of, it's kind of like a snowball effect. Uh -huh. So once we had one chapter, the next chapter just started coming through, all the contacts, and a lot of people were helping us throughout, um, and then just kept on going and until we're here, and we're still rolling down that hill. Uh, and as part of that snowball effect, you have a conference coming up on March 1st. Tell us about that. Sure. So Project Best is holding its second annual Science Innovation and Inspiration Youth Conference, or SciTYC for short, it's a catchy name. Uh -huh. um, and what we're doing this year is we're bringing 200 middle school students from 15 different locations in the metropolitan area. And they're going to be engaging in this day-long conference filled with STEM activities and um, guest speakers. So kind of as an overview, our three major themes are one, neuroscience, two, physics, and three, engineering. So for neuroscience, students will, as an example, will actually be seeing a sheep brain dissection, and then they'll be learning about um, new, um, ca brain cancer, and then they'll be doing their own brain simulation to learn about biopsy. 
in um, physics, we'll be learning about Newtonian physics, um, angular momentum, if you remember the little glow of Van der Graaffs where you touch it and your hair frizzes up, right, we're gonna be right. having that. We'll be doing activities with that, as well as um, with angular momentum where students are working with a gyroscopic um, bike wheel as well as spinning tables. And then engineering is um, designing, constructing, and testing a bridge structure. And then throughout these different activities, we're providing a free lunch. Once again, everything is student-led, everything was right, fundraising right. and stuff like that. Um, as well as we'll ha be having guest speakers from Northrop Grumman, Microsoft, and L3 Unmanned Systems. So it should be a great event. <laughs> Where is it going to take place? At Langston Hughes Middle School. Okay, great. Now yeah. I'm sure I am and everybody watching this interview <laughs> is thinking, how can I find out more about mm -hmm. Project Vest? How can they find out more? Sure. So the first thing you can do is check out our website. Uh, it's called, it's on www.theprojectvest.org and also our Facebook page. If you like that, you can have all these updates. Um, it's designed for both educators and students. So for educators, we have around a 60-page booklet where you can get an overview about what our sessions are, some examples of them. Um, if you're interested in running them in your own school, we can definitely help out with that. Mm -hmm. And for students, um, everything, we want student volunteers, so we want student volunteers for our events, um, as well as to take on a leadership role as chapter presidents um, and just expand the idea behind Project Best. That all sounds so great. Thanks mm -hmm. for coming in today. Thank you again for inviting me. Good <laughs> luck moving great. forward. Thank you.